Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I got involved in this fascinating area of science and mathematics education, and also how I actually got to Australia. So in a past life, I actually was doing research in a lab in New Orleans looking at the relationship between neurodegenerative diseases and viral infections, Alzheimer's disease and Huntington's virus. Really interesting, fascinating stuff. But what that taught me is I didn't want to work in a lab. <laughs> I liked the big ideas. I liked getting the grants. I liked writing the papers. I liked the results. I just didn't like um, Brain tissues were very interesting, though. So I got into um, a competitive graduate program in education in New Orleans, which was specifically looking at <coughs> addressing the needs of the Orleans Parish School System, which anybody knows anything about New Orleans? quite a poor city and very high needs area for students. So I got into the science program and the computer systems to start with the focus. Um, I have no options here, so you know what? We're just going to not PowerPoint it in your system. It won't let me do anything. This is the third one. I'm not going to talk about the school education here. Yeah, just technology. <laughs> so, okay, you're right. I'm going to write a letter to um, Bill Gates about this. So, anyhow, what happens is my first day of teaching, I'm an enthusiastic school teacher, right? And I go into my classroom, and we're going to do science. And from day one, I want them to know science is good, it's fascinating, we're going to do it, and I've got great experiment plans around probability and experiments design and I go in and everything's fine and they're in groups and they're doing what I say and they're working hard and all of a sudden I hang it up. Oh, Miss Matthews, there's um percentage. How do we percentage? Oh, I'm so silly, you're right. Here's calculator, calculator, everyone, no problem. Work out percentages. And then another hand goes up. And they say, but how do we calculate a percentage? Like, oh, part over whole time hundred. Go ahead, go do it. And another hand goes up. And they say, what's the part? What's the whole? So then, all of a sudden, I'm teaching these students how to do this really basic math. It hadn't occurred to me that this was going to stop me. And it was not my intention to do it all. Later, when I was actually reading the results, I realized not only could they not do it, they had no idea what the percentage meant. They couldn't actually talk to me about the results and what they'd done. So my first introduction to teaching science, I realized, wow, an issue here with the mathematics that they can't do, and I need to do that. So I went to talk to the math teacher. She was endearing and lovely. After she kind of laughed at me a little bit, naively thinking that they could do percentages, and we started working together. I got involved with some really good professional development activities funded by the National Science Foundation in the state, which was all about how to teach mathematics in the context of science. Also, um, really good stuff. And my last day of teaching. I remember, I didn't know it was my last day, and we had had this huge activity outdoors, team building with students, and it was happy hour, and I looked at the news, ooh, wow, there's a hurricane, going to Florida, we're in Florida, they're always getting hit by hurricanes. Well, three days later, that was Hurricane Katrina, there was no more teaching, that was done, um, and a long volley of events got me to Australia, <laughs> so here I am. And somewhere in this, I ended up working at the University of Queensland, a story for another time, and to my, not comfort, but I was interested to see that when I came to work in the Faculty of Science, they were struggling with the issue of science students and university, struggling with mathematics, creating those links. And they talked about it in terms of quantitative skills. Are science students being have more quantitative skills? And they were doing a curriculum review. And in the curriculum review, they looked at, well, what are our students actually doing? Because we tell them they should take these quantitative courses. But are they actually doing it? And what they found when they looked at 2005 data is only half of the BS, half of the students in science were taking a math um, a statistics course or a physics course. And only 17% were enrolling in the first year mathematics course. So they realized while they were encouraging students and saying you should do this, the students weren't actually doing these types of courses. So one of the goals of the new curriculum after the review was we need our students to have these skills. So I kind of think of the old Bachelor of Science as 
and all you can eat is the The students were giving a, a lot of choice, no structure, and they kind of said, as long as you eat off of these three tables, we hope we make the best choices, but go eat something else. Then when we think about the new bachelor science, they tried to put some structure into it. So it's more like, it's a choice, but we're going to give you some healthy options, and we're going to help you to make better choices. And along the way, there's certain things you're just going to have to eat. So when we looked at what they did with the new bachelor science curriculum, in first year, they required all science students to take statistics. They created a first year interdisciplinary math science course, which was trying to show the application of mathematics and science. They highly recommended all students did this with the notion that one day in the future this would become a compulsory course possibly as well. They encouraged all students to take up undergraduate research. And then in the final year, within the major, all students have to do a capstone. So along the way now, there's things that have to be done. There's structures that they put in place with the goal of trying to build these quantitative skills. So now we have a curriculum of choice, but it's got some structure. Where do I come into this? Where does my research come into this? So in my mind, I'm looking at this and thinking, wow, there's a lot that we can learn from this. Because while the Bachelor of Science has identified our students need quantitative skills, it wasn't just something that was isolated. It wasn't an issue at this one university. There had been calls overseas, America, the UK, also in Australia more recently, pointing out the fact that science students need to have these skills. The way that we do science is changing. Therefore, these things are important. The university undergraduate curriculum needs to respond to this. If you look at your handout, you've actually got a list of references that refer to this on the first page. So my research, my primary aim, when I realized, wow, this is a great context to be studying and to learn from, is I wanted to understand how a science curriculum that intended to build the quantitative skills of science to students was actually influencing the students' beliefs and attitudes around mathematics and science, looking at it in terms of these quantitative skills. And by quantitative skills, it's really referring to the application of mathematical thinking and reasoning in the context of science. So it's not just doing math, it's applying it within a context. My secondary aim is I also wanted to study this change to understand what aspects of a curriculum are actually helping to build students' quantitative skills with the idea that other people are struggling with the same concept, the same idea. So we want to build or I want to propose some mechanisms so that other people can also learn from this experience. So when I did this, my conceptual framework, and this is also in your hand on page one, second slide is I was deliberate in deciding the way I wanted to look at this was from the perspective of students. I wanted to understand how the students were experiencing the curriculum. So when you think about the notion of a curriculum in higher education, curriculum in general, one way to think about it is there's a curriculum that we plan, right? We have an idea, we have a notion, we've documented something, we have some vision or goals. In this case, quantitative skills. Then, university academics, largely teaching scientists, come in and they say, this is the content, this is how I'm going to teach it, this is how I'm going to assess it, and they do that. And then within that context, there's a bunch of students, and they all experience that in some way. It influences, hopefully, some learning outcomes, but it also influences their beliefs. So there's the curriculum we plan, there's the curriculum that university teachers enact, and then there's how students actually experience that curriculum. My focus was looking at how students actually experience that curriculum, that's the angle I wanted to look at this from. Um, I've got a quote, which you can read as well, um, from Levin. And the only reason I quote him is because he said this 11 years ago, but I would have said it if I thought about it, because it's such a good quote. The notion of thinking about curriculum form is we're doing ourselves an injustice. We don't actually look at how students are influenced by that reform. And most curriculum reform is about helping students in their life. So sensible to come from this perspective. 